black on black crimes for about a good month or two when the when the riots and the looting jumped off as far as the, the verdict. And what that was showing was if you put opportunity out here, the violence will stop. It was opportunity to get things that you wanted. So people took those things that they wanted and stopped the violence. But never did you hear the news mention, well, there was no violence today or this day. But as soon as the looting and stuff stopped, the news jumped right back on. Somebody got killed in the drive-by because they like negativity. They don't like bringing the real stuff. You never hear two songs that sound alike. That's what's the difference between the G-Funk sound and any other sound. The G-Funk sound is it's the different sound, but it's got that clarity that, that you can just say, oh, that's a Dr. Dre beat. And what about um, the production techniques in the studio? Is there anything you think that, I, I know you don't want to give away any secrets, but you think there's anything special that Dre pays attention to? Them? Yeah, he, he opens his mind for constructive criticism, and that's... That's what's important because the level he's at, a lot of people will feel that he don't have to listen to nobody, but he always allows himself to take that criticism because he knows that there's other ears out there that might hear. Fans like, they like that deep cover. Yeah. That creep with me as I crawl through the hood. Maniac, lunatic, calling Snoop Eastwood. Kicking dust as I bust police. You know what I'm saying? I was just laid back on that song. That song was like, when I wrote that song, it was like a whole lot of frustration was on my mind. And I was hungry as far as wanting to work. And I put my whole heart on the line with that song. That's probably why so many people felt me off of that song. And, Really, you know what I'm saying, wanting to dig into the vibe of Snoop Dogg and see what's really going on because that song was so so real and was so from the heart. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that I wasn't aware of, but perhaps there was some heat for that, Ice T took so much heat with Body Cam, and at the same point in time, you know, what you guys were talking about on that record was something pretty serious, but it was like you guys didn't seem to take any flack. I feel the reason why we got away with it because our dialogue was basically centered around a movie. And I mean, the movie was called Deep Cover. It was, it was the tale of an undercover cop becoming a criminal, but still playing the role of an undercover cop. So, and the way I put it down was like, the rap went with the movie. But then again, it didn't go with the movie because I wrote the rap before I seen the movie. So, you know, it's like, you know, the movie took out the flag for us as far as, you know, trying to get at the police and this and that, you know, but Ice-T didn't have no, no movie or nothing like that behind him. So, you know, they just felt him as a target. So they just shot him down like that. But I mean, if he's strong, he'll bounce back and get back on his feet and do what he's supposed to do, you know what I'm saying? Because he's a true legend to this guy. like respect. I mean, you gotta look at it as respect first. People have a lot of respect for my music first before they have a respect for, for me as a person because you don't know me as a person until you get my music then meet me. So I feel that when things like that happen, people respect my music and they let me know that rap is here to stay, not to die. with the release coming out? No, I didn't feel no pressure because it's just another day at the office for me. I mean, putting together my album was, it was like exciting because it was like a 12 year wait. I waited 12 years to become a solo rap artist and now it's like, boom, I get to do it. Record. Exactly. You could just put it on at a party and let it ride from beginning to the end, and everybody will enjoy this stuff. That's what our mission was when we set out to do it, was to make music that make people happy. 
not to make people want to go commit crimes, but to make people, you know, party and be in a different atmosphere. That's why I don't understand why they label this rap that we do as violent when it makes people happy, it makes people want to party, makes people want to go out and meet people. You know what I'm saying? That's the Came up with the concept of changing into dogs on the whole morphine because he felt that the video would be to another level since so many people was waiting for it. I had to hit him with something unexpected rather than just walk around and rap and look hard and you know what I'm saying? Give them something that they can remember you by. See, little kids love that. Little kids come up to me and want me to turn into a dog. You know what I'm saying? Just because they see the video and they feel I can do that. And that's that's cool because now it. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's that vibe, and I love little kids anyway. Now just throw your hands way up in the air And wave them all around like you just don't care Yeah, roll up the d*** and pull the drink And watch your stack, Why? cause doggies on the gang I wanna be the Elvis of rap I don't know how you could perceive that But the reason why I say that is because He been dead about 20 years And they still won't let him, they won't let him rest Cause they have so much respect for his music And that's what I want And the inmates in there would give me the vibe of that. I was just too talented to be in that situation when I could be out on the streets doing something positive, making money, you know what I'm saying, making myself useful. So I took that, you know what I'm saying, as, as knowledge that they was giving me to, to do something with myself and just did it. Just said, this is what I want to do. And I dedicated myself full time to rap. It's like this and like that and like this and uh It's like that and like this and like that and uh It's like this and like that and like this and uh There's no opportunity on these streets. I mean, you could take a, uh, any black man that graduates from high school with a basic, you know, 2.0, 3.0 grade point average, and they're not guaranteed no future or no job or no success. They're not guaranteed nothing. I mean, it's a matter of somebody hiring you, saying that they want to hire you and, and, and put you in this job. But if you're not allowed that opportunity, it's all type of frustrations out there. You don't have no money. You don't have no place to stay. And the first thing coming in your mind is that you want to take from the person who's having it. So that creates all this violence and all this havoc that goes on in the streets because there's no opportunity. If they put some opportunity out here and stop sending the money elsewhere, overseas, you know, taking care of all these other places when they're not taking care of home, such as the ghettos, you know, it shouldn't be no ghettos out here as much money is made in the United States. It should be jobs and opportunities for people who want to work because not everybody wants to be on the county. People do want to work. And if there's opportunity, they will take that opportunity. So they need to put something out here that's going to make some type of finances as far as helping the people out. And that'll, that'll eliminate some of the violence, not all of the violence, but some of it. Me. Because can't nobody be me like me. I mean, if I be myself, be original as possible, do the things that I like to do, not caring about what nobody else feels about it, then I feel that I'd be a success because people will appreciate me for being me rather than me trying to act and play somebody else's role and, and be something that I don't know how to be. All I know how to be is Snoop Dogg. You know what I'm saying? So that's all I do. That's all my image thing is just to be me. Mm -hmm. Who is Snoop Dogg as a person? He uh, laid back, you know, just everyday guy. Somebody who was blessed with a talent that has opportunity to do what he you know, wants to do and he does it to the fullest. He tries to help as he goes along. I mean, he got a lot of love for kids, for, for adults, for people who respect his music. He don't disrespect nobody until they disrespect him. Just laid back, cool, calm, and defeat. Wasn't together as far as the, the ends and the dividends, as far as, you know, the promoters didn't have the money right. They just wanted us to perform and pay us later rather than pay us and then we perform. So I guess, you know, we had to go and regroup and get that thing together. So we'll be waiting until the paperwork get together, and then we'll be right back at you. When do you think that'll happen? Mm, probably beginning of March, we should be back on the road, a full tour, chronic doggy style tour.